Welcome to Narrowboat the James Bill. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining me. Well, it's another lovely day here today at North Kilworth, and um, I think Richard's going to seize the opportunity and see if he can get the third and final steel sheet welded to the bottom of the boat. I can hear Tristan outside tinkering around doing a few bits and pieces, so I presume he is getting ready to grind down the outside, uh, ready for Richard to do that. So hopefully I'll be here to capture some of that, which would be excellent, because I've as I said yesterday, I haven't seen any of it yet. But what I want to do today, if I can, is water tank stuff. Um, and really, it starts with the water tank and it ends with the tap here. So uh, I need to do a couple of bits to the tank. I need to put in uh, a breather, attach the pipes, put the tap in, see if I've got the right fix fixings. And then I'll need water. Um, the only other thing about the steel going on um, below, and a few people have commented on this, um, and it's something I actually raised the question about as well with a few people, um, is why are we not treating the steel before putting it down? Um, obviously, the underside of it will be blacked. Um, the bit above it, though, um, shouldn't get any moisture in there at all the reason that richard blocked in the hole um is because of any condensation going through the hole into the new into the new on top of the new hull uh, or base plate so he didn't want that that's why he blocked in the hole um it's not standard practice to uh treat the inside of the steel um obviously it's subjected to an awful lot of heat through the welding so any red oxide or black or well, blacking would have to come off anyway because it wouldn't be able to fix to it so any red oxide would burn off and richard said that um it causes more problems than it's that than it fixes um some do with oxidization or something um so uh anyway he said it's not standard practice it's not what it's not what's done um obviously we black the underneath of it but we don't do anything on the inside so i hope that answers your question so first off, Tristan is grinding down the side of the boat, just smarting it up. And as you'll see, the third sheet is now in place. That was the one that we moved yesterday. And now here is the amazing plasma cutter being used just to trim off the excess steel to make the chime there. So Tristan is grinding down and cleaning up the steel frame so he can weld to it and Richard has gone round with the plasma cutter and trimmed down the excess here. And I've still got to do this side. Starting to take a bit of shape now. Okay, so the third sheet is in place. Ready to go into this area here.
it's only lifting like, I don't know, half a ton or whatever. But yeah. Obviously, it's a bend thing. Yeah, it's the bend as well. That's what, that's what I'm amazed how easily it seems to take the bend. Um, yeah. A lot of it is knowing where to place the jacks as you're bending it. So you're sort of chasing the... You don't want to fight the steel yeah. and try and force it to go where it doesn't want to go. Yeah, understood. So being tactical about where you put the, the pressure and in which spots, you can do it in a, in a strip and then move and then in a strip, if you, if you get what I mean. Yeah. It's, well, you can see, oh, it's a bit short of space in here, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah. Well, this work, well, I call work. Uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> oh, well, that went well. Um, so that was caused by the wind? Yeah, so the, there's an inert gas, argon, and that yeah. shields the weld pool. Yeah. Um, and stops what's called porosity and oxidization. So if you get a gust of wind, however, it can blow your inert gas away and then you get instant porosity and porosity just, you know, porous holes in it. Obviously that is not going to help you float any. So, <laughs> no. so the annoying thing is I then have to grind all that back out. Really? Yeah, then go over it once it's all been ground back out again. So gusty days. You can't just kind of fill it with more weld? No, it tends to keep bubbling through. Okay. So you, you want to keep, you, it basically needs to be ground back out and start, start it again on that okay. particular section. Yeah. It's just a hazard of welding outside. Oh, Tin point of steel is 1760 degrees centigrade. I'd say it's more than that, though. So it's pretty fucking hot, yeah. It's particularly hot if you pick some up by accident and you just warm it. <laughs> it just burned through your finger. Eh? It just burned through your finger, though. Um. So all the steel is now on the boat. So I'll walk you around it. This really isn't a sacrificial chime because, as you can see, it's underneath the side of the boat so that's never going to hit the surface um, all it's really done is provide Richard a easier task of welding it and you heard earlier some of Richard's issues with welding in the wind like this so this is going to be how it's chopped back obviously it's going to be finished the edge of that and the reason they've overlapped it here 
is so you can do a cutaway and then you can weld one plate to the other nice and easily so it overlaps nicely and you'll see here about the welding so we're only having one line of welding um, the reason for that is twofold firstly the gap in which the Richard's welding is quite a big cavity in there um, and we're using 1.2 mil cable so it's obviously filling quite a big void in there and for this all to melt right this pit here is six mil that bit there is at least four mil so what we're doing is we're welding we're mel basically melting this bit of six that bit of four we're melting in an extra what's that three four so the whole area all kind of becomes all molten and the way you can tell that it's worked is because underneath even though it doesn't visibly look like anything if you run your hand over there you can feel a lump there so you know it's gone all the way through you know the whole area is bonded so again you see this is how they overlap it so a nice seam down there a nice fillet down there and obviously trim away all the excess bloody dogs have started up again so it goes all the way around the back You've seen all this before. So we'll do the cutaway there, same as before. See, there you go, it gives you a good flavor for it. And all of that is all welded in. See here, this is where Richard ran out of gas, so that's all going to have to be come out. And some of these burn marks here are because of this, though that was the original tack. So, what you do, Richard kind of grinds away a, li a little bit and then welds that way and then back up to it so by his own confession though this is not the prettiest of welding jobs but quite frankly it's underneath the water line the choices are pretty or watertight so i've gone for watertight this is much nicer and this chine here gives richard a much cleaner weld much more to go at So there we have it, all the plates in place. Now there's a lot of welding to be done. It's such a hot day and John's got an idea to uh, cool us all down. Well, John's plan involves a beer and the boat. It's a good company. yards oh, it's already cold Yeah. 
So basically we went into the tunnel, overheated and had to reverse out. So they're just gonna moor up here, let it cool down for a bit. It does look like we've lit a fire in the tunnel. Right, well I've got to get back to the wharf and get my water system installed. Got loads to crack on with. Until next time, take care. Bye bye.